following is a Worldwide Church of God presentation. Greetings, brethren, at all the feast sites all over the world. In May of last year, the Ambassador Foundation, sponsored, of course, by this church, brought the, a group of children called the Young Ambassadors from Shanghai on a trip to the United States. It was the first time that the government of China had ever allowed a group of children like this to leave China and come to the United States or take a trip of this sort. But they did it through confidence in the Ambassador Foundation, Ambassador College, and the Worldwide Church of God. Mrs. Reagan, the wife of President Ronald Reagan, had seen them when she was in Shanghai some months before. And she was very much impressed with them and the performance that they put on and invited them that if they came to the United States, and I think she heard that we were bringing them here, that they would also visit the White House and put on a performance there before guests of Mrs. Reagan in the White House. These children range in age from about 7 to 14, just children, and they had a wonderful tour, Pasadena, San Francisco, and then in Washington, D.C., and uh, with main performances at the Kennedy Center in Washington. But their first performances were put on in the Ambassador Auditorium in Pasadena. Later in November of last year, I visited these same children at the Children's Palace in Shanghai. And oh, what a welcome they gave me. I will show you here that welcome. never received such a welcome. We're only showing you just a little portion of it here, but it lasted for about two blocks, and it was a very noisy welcome. They were all shouting in Chinese, welcome Mr. Armstrong.
to show it to you, and I think that you will enjoy seeing it instead of the young ambassadors of Pasadena. This year, we're showing you the little ambassadors from Shanghai. In May 1984, Ma Junyi was one of a group of young musicians and dancers from Shanghai who visited the United States. This was the first time that children from the People's Republic of China had performed in North America. We were known as the Little Ambassadors of Shanghai. We toured America for five weeks. It was a great adventure, a time I will remember for the rest of my life. Ma Junyi lives with his parents in an apartment in Alley 1610 off the Nanjing Road. Each morning they leave home for the day's work. Dr. Ma goes to his work at the hospital, and Mrs. Ma prepares to escort her son to school. They ride together through the familiar alleys of their neighborhood and toward the busy streets of the city. I always enjoy riding to school with my mother. It gets the day off to a good start for both of us. I love Shanghai. I love the main streets with their big shops crowded with people from all over China. It is exciting to see all the changes as my country begins to modernize. Shanghai is the biggest city in China, and I learned that it is the fourth largest in all the world. Millions of people live here, and so many of them are children. Our country has more children than anyone else, and we have been told we are very important for our country's future. Shanghai is China's greatest port, and the Huangpu River is always busy with the coming and going of many ships and ferries. Among the passengers is 12-year-old Cheng Rong. I take the ferry across the river every day. I don't mind because of the wonderful opportunities the children have. Cheng Rong and Ma Junyi are children of the new China, happy, confident, and eager to make the most of their lives. Today, their journeys are different, but soon they will meet and travel together to a great adventure on the other side of the world. I knew that I had been given a very special opportunity when I was selected to study at the conservatory, but I never dreamed I would be able to travel to other countries like this. It's a new house. It's, it's a new house. house. It's a new house. It's a new house. Good. Like many children in China today, Ma Junyi is eager to learn the English language. His English class has become very important to him. Ma Junyi is one of several hundred talented children who have been selected to attend the Shanghai Conservatory of Music. Now that I know I will soon be going to America, I pay attention and work very hard in the English classes. I know I will make friends more easily in America if I can speak a little English. The conservatory is the oldest institution of higher music learning in China. It was established in 1927, and its graduates have been recognized throughout China and around the world. The young artists who are chosen to study at the conservatory receive hours of individual instruction from experts every day. instrument 
is the violin. I have been playing it for several years now, but I know that I have many more years of practice ahead. We study many different kinds of instruments, both Western and also our traditional Chinese instruments, like the zheng, which sounds rather like the harp that is used in Western orchestras. I think that our Chinese music sounds best when it is played on the traditional instruments. instrument is the cello. It is difficult and her teacher makes her work very hard. But Hai Yi doesn't mind. Like me, she has been chosen to go to tour America and she wants to reach the best possible standard. All of us who are going to tour also have to learn to play together in a small ensemble. Our conductor is Mr. Wang. They don't need a violin in this small orchestra, so I play some bells. We all enjoy the practice sessions. It's quite relaxing after all the hours we spend with our solo instruments. And of course, while we were practicing, some other children in another part of our city were also preparing for the American tour. At the Shanghai Municipal Children's Palace, Cheng Rong joins her friends in the group rehearsing Chinese traditional dances. I love coming to the Children's Palace. Madame Wu makes us work very hard, but she says that if we are going on a tour, we must be the very best we can be. Zhang Shiyang and I have been working on our dance for several months, and we have become very good friends. So much practice hasn't left us much time for other activities. Although there are many other things we could do here. Over 80, I think. For example, some children want to learn sculpture, while others are taught to make dolls and little figures out of colored rice dough. We can learn new things and old. Some children want to become skillful in our traditional Chinese calligraphy. While others can't wait to learn how to use our new computers. Upstairs there is a room where we can try out model boats. Even some of the girls enjoy that activity. Our children's palace is especially known for its music. We have several choirs. Our instructors are very dedicated. Most of them have full-time jobs, but they volunteer to help us after school. We also have two orchestras. One plays traditional Chinese music. The other is for Western classical music. Some children, like Xu Fan for instance, study solo instruments. She has been chosen to come to America with us. She has to practice a lot, but she is really good. Wu Zhu Fan is 12 years old. She was a prize winner in the Shanghai Children's Piano Competition when she was only 10. But when you're only six years old, being chosen to represent your country in America seems like an impossible dream. This little girl knows that if she works hard, one day she too will be an expert pianist.
Altogether, 2,000 children can enjoy the facilities of the Shanghai Children's Palace. This palace was established in 1956 through the efforts of Madam Sung Ching Ling. Madam Sung Ching Ling is one of the most honored figures in modern Chinese history. She was the wife of Sun Yat-sen, the first president of the Chinese Republic. After Dr. Sun's death, Sung Ching Ling never remarried. She devoted the rest of her long life to service to her country, and in particular, the children. The 20th century has been a time of turmoil for the Chinese. Through the years of war, revolution, and social upheaval, it was the children who suffered most. Madam Soong worked strongly on their behalf, first to provide the basics of food and shelter, and then to provide for their moral and intellectual development. She founded the Children's Palace in Shanghai as an after-school facility where children could be provided with a variety of opportunities to help them develop their talent and potential. The Children's Palace in Shanghai was the first of over 4,000 children's palaces throughout China. Because of her long years of dedicated service to China's young people, she became known affectionately as the grandmother of all Chinese children. When she died in 1981, her grandchildren from all over China came to mourn her. Madam Sung Ching Ling's love for her grandchildren lives on through the Sung Ching Ling Foundation, the China Welfare Institute, and the Children's Palaces, caring for the growth and development of the children who come to them every year. We are glad we have these fine facilities at the Children's Palace. Sometimes the exercises get boring, but we have been told that to be a good dancer, you have to have much self-discipline and be able to concentrate. We must practice very hard in order to go on tour. Is the oldest. She is 14. She is taking the lead in a very beautiful dance about peacocks. Xiao Longrong is her partner. Yi Hu Chen is the youngest. She is only seven years old. Ha Ying has been selected to be the announcer during the performances. This is an important job and she has to practice extra every night after we have finished the dance practice. I think the day our costumes arrived made the trip seem real to us. 
The costumes were specially made for our visit to America. As the dancers and musicians prepared, representatives of the Children's Palace, the Children's Welfare Institute, the Friendship Association, and the Ambassador Foundation planned the many details and organization. Finally, all was ready. And on May 2nd, they left Shanghai and headed across the Pacific Ocean for their big adventure on the other side of the world. China seemed to take forever. I don't think any of us realized how far away America was. We had to fly halfway around the world. But eventually we landed in Los Angeles many hours after we had left China. America looked very strange to us at first. The buildings and streets were so different from Shanghai, and there were so many cars. The little ambassadors drove through Los Angeles to Pasadena, a city 20 miles away at the foot of the San Gabriel Mountains. They stayed in Pasadena for the first few days of their tour. They lived on the campus of Ambassador College, headquarters of the Ambassador Foundation, sponsors of the Little Ambassadors American Tour. By the time we arrived at Ambassador College, we were all very, very tired. It seemed funny to be so tired since it was only the middle of the morning. But then I remembered that in Shanghai it was late at night. The next day when we had rested, we toured the campus. It was very clean and well kept. Our guide told us that this campus had won awards for being the most beautiful campus in North America. Many of the buildings on the campus are beautiful homes that have been made into dormitories for the students. Our American friends had arranged their reception so that we could meet some of the students of the college. We learned that some of the students were learning Chinese and hoped to travel to China. They wanted to try out their Chinese words on us. Mr. Herbert Armstrong, the president of the college and the foundation, came specially to meet us. Now I wonder if I can make a toast to the continued good relationship and happiness between your country and ours, between China, People's Republic of China, and the United States of America. Mr. Armstrong was very kind to us. He adopted us as his Chinese grandchildren. So we called him our American Grandpa. He invited us to visit his home. We gave him a gift from Shanghai. 
The next day we visited Imperial School. It is a school that is run by Ambassador College for younger children. It was very interesting for us to see the American children at work in their classrooms. Can you say good morning to them? <laughs> we couldn't speak each other's languages, but somehow we managed to communicate. I think some things are the same in every language. Some of us wondered if we would get along with the American children, but we didn't have to worry about that. We met our American friends again the next day. They had saved us some front row seats to watch them on the annual sports day at the Ambassador College Athletic Track. We were able to exchange gifts. We didn't know it then, but we were going to be spending quite a lot of time with our new American friends in the next few weeks. One day, our American friends took us to Disneyland. That was fun. There was so much to see and do. And we met some very unusual characters. Ambassador's first official performance in the United States was held at the Ambassador Auditorium. This auditorium is one of the finest theaters of its size in the world. Many famous orchestras, musicians, and opera stars have performed here since it was opened in 1974. In the dressing rooms, the little ambassadors prepared for their first performance. The months of preparation and rehearsal were over. In the auditorium, a packed house waited expectantly for the curtain to go up.
happy that the American audience enjoyed our Chinese music. When we heard them applaud, we knew we were going to be successful. All those long hours of practice back in Shanghai were all worthwhile. <laughs> Mr. Wang expected us to reach a high standard while we were preparing for the tour. He wouldn't accept anything but our very best. But he was always so helpful and encouraging, and we didn't mind working hard for him. dance was very beautiful. In Chinese dances like this, we try to copy the natural movements and rhythm of nature. of a flock of wild geese flying south for the winter. We think of the graceful beauty of the birds as they soar through the air.
In this dance, one little goose, that's Chiao Rong Rong, leaves the rest of the flock one night and becomes lost. for it. are very relieved to get her back so that they can continue their flight to the south.
Yu Chen was the youngest member of our group. She had a dance about a little girl in an apple orchard whose responsibility was to scare away the crows. But she was trusted not to take any of the apples for herself. We were very proud of the way she did this dance. She worked very hard preparing for this performance. Yu Yu Chen was very young, but she wanted to dance very much. Madame Wu saw that she could be a very good dancer if she practiced very hard. Madame Wu would work with her long after the rest of us had finished practicing. She even made up the apple dance, especially for her. Madame Wu worked out ways to help her. Like when she found it hard to keep twisting around in the same place, Madame Wu drew a circle with chalk and showed her how she could practice at home. During the weeks of training, Yi Chen would practice and practice. She was only seven years old, but she never gave up. A lot of people did not think Yi Hee Chen would be ready, but Madame Wu had confidence in her. It was so good to see her dance on the stage of the Ambassador Auditorium.
the second city to be visited by the little ambassadors of Shanghai was San Francisco, about 350 miles north of Los Angeles. San Francisco is built on the peninsula between the Pacific Ocean and San Francisco Bay. The Golden Gate Bridge is one of its most spectacular sights. 1,280 meters long and supported by towers 227 meters high. The Golden Gate Bridge is one of the engineering marvels of the world. San Francisco has the largest Chinese community outside of Asia. Thousands of Chinese live in the area known as Chinatown. Some of San Francisco's Chinese people have risen to very important positions. Dr. Xiao Wei Wu, the president of San Francisco University, invited the little ambassadors to meet him in his office. Dr. Wu has worked for many years to build friendship between the United States and China. invited to meet San Francisco's mayor, Diane Feinstein. Her office was in the city hall in the center of town. The mayor was very kind. She gave us a nice welcome when we went to see her in her Hello. big office. Hello. She reminded us that Shanghai and San Francisco are sister cities. We were able to present her with a small gift from her favorite Chinese city. We knew that Mayor Feinstein was very busy, and we were very pleased that she had been able to spend so much time with us. The Little Ambassador's performance in San Francisco was to take place at the Herbst Theater. It was in this theater that the original United Nations Charter was signed in 1945.
dance that I perform with Zhang Shui Yang is about two girls going to school in the snow one morning. We are enjoying ourselves. Then we see that we can help others by clearing the snow from the road. We build a snowman to warn the people that even though the road is clear, it is still very slippery. It doesn't snow very much in Shanghai, but this dance does remind us that even children have a responsibility to help. There are so many people in our country, and we have to help each other. So in our dance, we try to show that even when you're having fun, there might be something useful to do. So, we build a snowman and put a sign on him to warn people that even though we have cleared the snow off the road, it is still slippery.
dance about the beautiful peacock needed a lot of preparation and practice. Madame Wu took us to the Shanghai Zoo to see the real peacocks. We watched them for a long time and noticed how they moved their heads and bodies. Madame Wu showed us how we could use our hands and put the proper expression into our faces to properly interpret the movement of the peacocks in the dance. Back at the children's palace, we practiced and practiced so that this beautiful dance would be just right. she owes a lot to the hard work of her teacher. Many of our teachers are old now, but they are still hard at work, passing on their skills to the new generation. We have had some hard times in our country, and it hasn't always been easy to be a music teacher. They have told us that there were years when they did not have instruments to play. They had to work hard in the fields or in factories, but after the day's work, they would just play on boards or tabletops or just in the air so that their fingers would stay supple and so that they would not forget the music that they loved. In this way, they kept their skills alive for us. They say that just to see us becoming good musicians is all the reward they want. We really love and respect them for their dedication in wanting to teach us, and it makes us want to work hard too.
After San Francisco, the little ambassadors flew to America's capital city, Washington, D.C. Washington was very interesting. There is so much to see and do. We saw the monument built in memory of America's first president, George Washington. One afternoon, we visited the Washington Zoo to say hello to a famous Chinese now living in America, Li Ling, the panda. Our country gave Li Ling to America, but she didn't seem to miss home very much. She seemed more interested in eating bamboos and saying hello to us. We also went to the National Museum of Space and Aviation. There were so many interesting things in there. We saw the very first airplane to fly. We were also able to see some of the first spaceships and spacesuits. We were even able to go inside a space laboratory, exactly like the ones that orbit the Earth. was an example of the type of the spaceship that landed on the moon. There was even a place where we could actually touch a rock that the astronauts had brought back from the moon with them. We went to the Pentagon to visit Mr. Orr, the Secretary of the Air Force. He made Gun Yi feel like a real jet pilot. You breathe in like that. Mr. and Mrs. Orr made us welcome. We sang them a special song. We went to see the Lincoln Memorial, a tribute to Abraham Lincoln. We were so glad that our friends from California had come to Washington with us. Most of them had never visited Washington before, so this was their first chance to see the sights of their country's capital city. Lincoln was a very famous man. We learned that he had lived about 120 years ago. During his lifetime, he freed the slaves in America and also saved his country from being destroyed by a terrible civil war. That evening, we all went together to a Chinese restaurant for a real Chinese meal. Some of our American friends had obviously never used chopsticks before, but everyone had a good time. Even the cooks came out to join in the fun. The performances in Washington were held in the Terrace Theater at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. This beautiful auditorium was opened in 1971. It was built in memory of the late President John F. Kennedy and is America's National Cultural Center. Behind the scenes, the children practiced a song that had been specially written for them by Warren Dyke, a young Canadian composer. While we were waiting for the performance to begin, we relaxed by learning some American children's games with our friends from Imperial School. But then it was time to perform again.
had one other performance in Washington, which we will never forget. In some ways, this was the most exciting of all. When Mrs. Reagan, the wife of the President of the United States, had visited Shanghai, she came to see us at the Children's Palace. She invited us to visit her if ever we came to America. At the time, that seemed just like a dream. But here we were in Washington, and Mrs. Reagan invited us to come to the White House and give a performance to some of her guests. Wonderful. When I was in, uh, when when we were in China, I uh, I had the most wonderful opportunity to to see these young people perform, and um, when I learned that they were coming here, uh, I was I asked them if they would come and perform here at the White House so that you all could see them too because they are so, so great and I know that you'll think so also. I can't wait for you to see them. <laughs> To this famous building, where so many ambassadors had come before, the little ambassadors of Shanghai brought their own very special message of goodwill. Wherever they traveled on their American tour, they charmed all who met them, bridging the differences between two great nations with their talent, their enthusiasm, and their love. There was one moment that all who saw them will never forget. At the end of each of the performances, the little ambassadors of Shanghai were joined on stage by the children from Imperial Schools in Pasadena. Side by side, they sang a song in both English and Chinese that had been specially written for them.
to go back to our homes on the opposite side of the earth. Forget my American friends. I hope we will be friends forever. Mm -hmm.